The church needs an example. And I said, okay, Lord, uh, that, that's good. And I said, Where's the, where is the example you want us to go to? He said, go to the Acts. It's called the Acts of the Apostles, but really it's the Acts of the church. The Acts of the New Testament church. You know, one of the best ways to learn things is to watch somebody do it. How many of you learn best by watching someone? Some people learn good by reading instructions, they're very detailed. They, but, but for the most part, um, generally we as people do better by following someone else. As There's an example. One thing that we're working with um, our middle granddaughter is, is she, she loves gymnastics and jumping and, and spinning and all those things. We're trying to work with her to, to get a, a cartwheel down. And she's, she really started with a bad habit. She's doing a half cartwheel round off thing. And so it's, it's been really difficult to get her to, to uh, do it correctly. And some, we're holding her upside down, trying to hold her legs straight. And, and, you know. But I think what would work best is if we had a video of someone doing it and she could just watch that and watch that and see how the legs are supposed to stay, stay straight and spin over, you know, she would do better. Well, it's the same for the church. You know, we, we need to have God's vision before us of how the church should be, not what we're seeing in TV, not what we're seeing necessarily in, in regular church services. We need to see God's vision for the church. How would you, how, how He wants us to act, how He wants us to live, to see the the evidence and fruit that, that God is alive, that Jesus is alive. If you think about it, the world needs to see proof that Jesus is alive. And how did they do it in the New Testament there in the book of Acts? Signs and wonders were done in the name of the holy child Jesus. We'll, we'll get to that scripture you know, during, during this study, but... Um, I believe that as we take time to put this vision in front of us, that it will help lift us up where we need to be instead of our heads down of what was or what is going on. Amen? Amen. So we're going to look our, uh, look our eyes up. We're going to raise our eyes up. And I believe the Spirit of God is going to... Uh, help us. In fact, I'll say it this way. It's Jesus' desire that we have signs more so than the book of Acts. I believe that. I believe that. Because in the book of Ephesians, Paul wrote, he said, I, I, that Jesus is coming for a glorious church. And the glory of the latter house is supposed to be more than the former house. Now, I know in, in Scripture in the Old Testament that that's re referring to Israel. I understand that. But there's also the, you know, the type and shadow. I believe that's for the church as well. Amen. There's the former house, the beginning. But I, I just don't see God starting off with a bang and ending with a little... <laughs> I don't see God working that way. It doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> no. So, um, as, as we see these things, as we read about how God was working, how the Holy Spirit was working with the church, may we see us not just walking in the same things, but walking in even greater things. Jesus said, and it's recorded in John's Gospel, He said, and even greater things you will do because I go to the Father. Greater. We need to have a greater mentality. You know, uh, you, you know the greater than sign? I like that greater than. Less than, I don't like that one too much. Greater than. Greater things. Not less, greater. Praise the Lord. Okay, so, um, you know, just within uh, just the last few weeks, we read much of... Um, 
and dealt with Acts 1, Acts 2. So we're, we're going to actually start um, at the uh, end of chapter 2 in our, our study. So now the Holy Spirit has come uh, in fullness in, in the ministry that Jesus intended and told the disciples to wait for that power to come upon them. And in verse uh, 41, it says, Then they had gladly received His word. Uh, they were baptized. The same day were added about 3,000 souls. I'll tell you what, the anointed preached word of God will bring results. And so when, when Peter got up and spoke there at that day of Pentecost, I mean, here it was... Uh, the, the Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, and there were uh, Jews gathered from all over there in Jerusalem. And what he preached by the Holy Spirit pierced their hearts and caused them to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. So 3,000 were added to the church. It says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. Actually, you know, that's probably a good place to stop right there. Let's park there for a minute. Praise God. It says they continued steadfastly. If we want the power of God in our lives, if we want the power of God in our family, if we want the power of God in our church, we are going to have to change. God's not changing. No. We are the ones that have to do something. So if we're not getting the results, guess what? We're going to have to do it their way instead of our way. You know, I, I just, I, I'm, I'm, I think this Sunday we're going to have the State of the Church address. And uh, I'll give you a little preface. The church is still trying to use the world's methods to reach the world. And if you use the world's methods, you're going to get worldly results. And so you're going to have a bunch of people maybe show up because you're playing the jamminess rock music. You... You share the most flowery stories and make people feel good. But guess what? That isn't necessarily making saints of God children of God. It's not. And so, we need to do things God's way. Not a, not a social gospel. Not a feel-good thing. We call it, you know, seeker-friendly type things. In fact... So many churches now don't even call their facility a church anymore. They call it a what? A campus. A campus. Like a school, a campus. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the, the hip thing to do. They're trying to make people come to church. So they're going to use what people want to get there. Well, you know, some organizations, they have bingos. They have uh, uh, one place up here. They have comedy nights. They have all kinds of things happening, you know. Once a month, they have this special event. They have a John Denver singer sound alike show up. Uh, you know, it's like, dear Lord. Yeah, I mean, just, yeah. I just, just have all kinds of worldly things to get people to show up. How about the power of God? How about the healing power, delivering power of God? Amen. That's what the world needs. They don't need bingo. They don't need to hear John Denver sing a song or his sound alike. I mean, I like his music okay. But, dear Lord, the church needs to be the church. The called out ones. The different ones. And the, what makes us different is if we will continue steadfastly in the Word of God. The doctrine was what they were teaching. 
at that time, they didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Acts, and, and the rest of the letters that Paul wrote, and Peter wrote, and John wrote. They, they didn't have those things. Yes, they had the scrolls of the Old Testament, but the, they had to verbally share the doctrine, the things that Jesus had shared with them. So they continued in that steadfastly. And in fellowship. And they ate together. And they prayed together. We're talking relationship. See, that's another thing that the church is missing out on. Not, not all the church. But many are missing out. Their church services are like a movie theater. People go in and go out. They're entertained and they leave. There's no fellowship or relationship developed between the people. See, when there's fellowship and relationship, when someone's hurting, you reach out. When someone's missing, you call them, hey, where are you at? But if you don't know people, I mean, there's a thousand people, five thousand, ten thousand people in this big building. Hey, you won't know nobody. And guess what? They won't know you. Praise the Lord. So we're to continue steadfastly in the Word of God and fellowship and breaking bread and in prayer. And notice what happened. When they were doing that, the fear of God came upon the souls of the people. What is the fear of God? That, that, is, um, that is not, oh, you're cowering afraid of God. No, it's talking about the reverence of God. When we have the fear of the Lord, man, we won't, we won't be planning on sinning. We don't premeditate and you know, say, well, God will forgive me and premeditate. No, no, we won't, we won't mess with that. No, because the fear of God is upon us. Yeah, and it says because of what they were doing, the fear of God was present. And because the fear of God was present, many wonders. See, the gifts of the... Oh, Lord, help me get this across. The Holy Spirit is not going to manifest Himself when there's so much entertainment going on. When there's... Supposedly it's worship, but it's really not. It's a rock concert. No. The Holy Spirit will, not, will only manifest where He is respected, honored, and where He is desired. And see, if we have the fear of God in our hearts, then the Holy Spirit is able to do something. Amen. And we see the result because of what they were doing. Many, say many, many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. You know, this message is going to be good for all of us, me included, because I can remember, it's been many years ago, I would wake up in the middle of the night because I just had a very vivid spiritual dream. And I had laid hands on a person that their leg was missing and their leg grew out. I was like, woo -hoo! I mean, that's a wonder. That's a sign. Is God able to do that? Yes. But the Holy Spirit is only able to manifest those gifts of healings and workings of miracles where He is honored, where He is respected. Where, where the people are in this position of one accord. Hallelujah. You know what? We need signs and wonders. Not just we the church, but, but we need it so the world will see, again like I said earlier, that Jesus has risen from the dead, that He truly is Lord. Then the lost will come into the church. They're not coming in now. What is there to come for? <laughs> for the most part, just think about it. But if the power of God is there to heal, the power of God is there to deliver from drugs and alcohol and all kinds of perversions, 
Woo, and they hear about it, they'll come running like they did to Jesus. You know, he'd show up in a town, the word would get out, and they'd come from all over. They'd walk 20, 30, 50 miles to be there. Amen. Amen. So let's begin to do the things necessary for the signs and wonders to happen. Verse number 44. And all that believed were together and had all things common. Some even sold possessions and goods and gave it to those that were in need. And they continued daily. Say daily. Daily Daily with one accord. You know, some people complain because they go to church once a week. Do you know the early church met every day? Yeah, over the years I've heard people go Oh, bless God, we have service Sunday morning, then Sunday night, and then, and then there's a, a praise and worship practice on Monday, and then there's a Tuesday morning Bible study, and Wednesday night midweek service, and, and then the ladies' meeting on Thursday night. Dear Lord, you don't give me any time. <laughs> I, I've, heard, I've heard people say that. Hallelujah. But the early church, say the early church. The early church met every day. That's what it says in my Bible. They continued daily in one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. What is breaking bread? It does not just mean having supper together. No, they were having communion together. And they ate, they ate their meat, it says, with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now, now this is real church growth. I don't know if it's still popular because I, I don't even look for it. Or if any ads come to the church office, I throw them away. But it was so popular years ago to have church growth seminars. Church growth seminars. We'll help you. We'll help you build your church. And what they would do is they would, they would tell you, well, you need to have this kind of music. You need to sing these kind of songs. You have to have the flashy video stuff and all that up there. And you have to uh, make sure your services are short. Okay? Make your services short. And, and don't talk too much about money. And, and so, I mean, they just had all of these things, all of these gimmicks on how to get people to come to church. Well, guess what? Most of those things weren't in the Bible. Maybe they got people in there. But once they got in there, what they got? They just got a bunch of people. But not much was going on spiritually. No, real church growth is what we just read about. The church continuing steadfast in the Word of God and in fellowship with one another. The fear of God shows up. The Holy Spirit moves. And they continue in this whole process. And God is able to add to the church. In America, the church isn't being added to. It's being taken away. Now, in other countries, it's not necessarily that. But, but right now, that's what's going on in America. It's, the church isn't being added to. But we can turn that around. It doesn't have to stay like this. Okay? And, and that's the good news about that. But, but we have to, you know, we have to admit where we're at. We have to be honest where things are at so that we can make changes. You know, it's kind of like the person that says, well, I'm not an alcoholic. Well, if you're drinking every day or almost every day, yeah, you, there's a problem. That, that thing has a control over you. And, and you won't deal with it until you admit what's going on. Okay? Praise God. Now, um, it's kind of the same thing with our nation. And I'm going to get a little political right now, but, you know, pardon me. But this nation will continue to uh, be harassed by terrorism if we don't face and call what it is to deal with how it needs to be dealt with. If we call it all kinds of other names and, and, and play around with it, you know, and even an idea. Well, we're going to contain. We're going to contain ISIS. Dear Lord, blow them up. 
All they're, they're, they're a killing machine that Satan is using. Thousands and thousands of Christians being beheaded and crucified. I don't know if you've seen the pictures. Little kids crucified and their heads, heads off. I've seen the pictures. It's real. Oh, we're going to contain them. Hmm. Well, again, you've got to call it what it is. And we've got to call the church. And America is not where it should be. And, but we're going to watch and see in the book of Acts how we should be so we can imitate that way instead of what's being shown in other places. Well, I'll give myself an amen right there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, look at that. We'll have favor with all the people when we're praising God, and the Lord will be building His church. Amen. Okay. Now, with that introduction, let's go to chapter 3. We may go through the whole book of Acts reading every word. I don't know exactly how we're going to do it. Kind of like we did our Old Testament study. I mean, we, we took months and months and months and months dissecting Scripture starting at Genesis 1. And uh, so we'll see how the Lord does this, but right now we're going to read chapter 3. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. Now we read earlier that they were spending every day going to the temple and praying, right? Well, here's an example. Here they're going. And there's a certain man, lame from his mother's room, womb, that was carried there at the temple, and he was there daily at the gate, which is called Beautiful. And what he did is he asked for money of those that entered the temple. He didn't have any other way to make money, to survive. And so he went to a place that maybe people would be compassionate. All right? Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms or asked for money. And, and, and praise God that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. There was one time, this guy bugged me. i got to admit it. I was down here at Vaughn's. And, and, and I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it was, I was out of the Spirit, in the Spirit. I don't know. You judge that. But it just ticked me off. This guy got right in my face and demanded money. And and it seemed like that whole week I had been badgered by other people as well. And I had it. And I turned to him and I said, do I look like an ATM? I was mad. I was mad. Who, who do you think you are? I mean, he got right in my face and was, was demanding that I give him money. I said, do I look like an ATM? I should have said, what's your password? <laughs> praise God. Well, praise the Lord, Peter and John had a little more loving attitude. I don't know. Glory to God. So he asked Peter and John for money. Peter fastened his eyes upon him, and John was right there. He said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive what? Some money. Peter said, well, before Peter said, you know what I found out most of the time when people ask for money? That's what they want. Because if you ask them, can I go buy you some food? They'll say no. The majority of times they'll say no. What do they want money for? Well, they want money for their booze and drugs and cigarettes. So if you give them money, you're helping them to sin. Praise God. What is that? Whose fault is that? Is that yours? Can you silence that? Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Praise God. Yes. They probably don't even have a car there. They're faking it, and they're just just trying to use that as a scam to get money out of you. Oh, uh, okay, but one time I did that. I mean, uh, my car stopped, and the guy helped me uh, for three hours. 
Yeah. Down the hill to the gas station, and I didn't have yeah, sometimes it's a real thing. I but understand. You know, that's, that's right. Be led by the Spirit of God. He'll give you peace. And, you know, don't get the idea that, that every time someone comes up to me, I say, I'm not, you know, I'm not an ATM or whatever. Do I look like an ATM? Don't think that I always do that. But, you know, there, there are times when you discern that someone really, you know, is in trouble. They need a little bit of help. If you can help them, help them. I mean, that's, that's, that's a good thing to do. Um, but by the same token, we should not be supporting uh, people's uh, things that are destroying them. We should, we should not, dis- yeah, support those things. And so um, there are resources out there that will uh, help them get, get food and, and, and other things. And so anyway, um, we see here that Peter said to him, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give to you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. See, the man was seeking something temporary. He was seeking just enough money so he could get food and and live another day. But God had something bigger in plan for him, something bigger than just the next meal. He had something to change his life forever. Amen. Thank God for that. Now, don't get the idea that Peter and John were poor, necessarily. They just didn't have money on them. Okay? They didn't have it on him. But they said, what, what we do have, the Spirit of God, we give to you. And it says he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Now, I want you to picture this, my friends. This guy had never stood up a day. Never. Not once stood up. Okay? And Peter had the gall. He had the gumption. He had the nerve to grab him by the hand. Now, you've seen people that they have been lame, they haven't walked. You've seen what their legs look like. I mean, there's, there's no muscle. I mean, it's just like toothpicks, okay? <clears throat> but Peter, the Spirit of God was on him. And he was being moved by the Spirit to do something about that man's condition. So he grabbed him by the hand and yanked him up. I mean, that takes some nerve. That takes some faith. How many of you read some books by Smith Wigglesworth? If you've not, you need to. You can find some videos from way back when he was ministering. Okay, all right. Well, there, there are some amazing things that he did that you, you just shake your head. And, oh, my, the, the, the faith to be able to do that. There's one specific thing. Well, there's, there's a number of stories I, I, can, I can remember. But one was this child that was brought up to him, and the child was deformed. I mean, it just, it was a mess. Is he okay? Okay. Can we... uh, Yeah, Matt, can you get a trash can in the bathroom? In the name of Jesus, we take authority over sickness right now. In the name of Jesus. You need to go to the restroom or, or... In the name of Jesus, we take authority over sickness. Thank you, Lord, for the victory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just keep praying with us. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Matt, would you call 911? Call 911, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, well, we need to have paramedics come. Yep. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus.